Welcome back. I'm David the Good, author of such best-selling books as Compost Everything and not such a best-selling book, but also really cool, Turn to Earth, a Jack Broccoli novel. But today I want to talk about somebody else's book, or at least an idea I got from somebody else's book. This book is called Restoring the Soil, second edition. This is by Roland Bunch, and it is a look at a lot of green manure cover crop systems from around the world, particularly on small holding farmers, small amounts of land, areas where you might have had uh, big issues with drought or previous slash and burn agriculture, etc. And as I was reading it, I started to think about a particular tree here in our yard and all over the south, up into North Carolina, down into Florida, a tree that people really don't like, but which is also incredibly useful. The mimosa tree. Beautiful puffy little pink flowers and lots of seed pods that seed all over your landscaping. It is also called Albizia julibrisson. That is the Latin name. So if you want to know what something really is, you need to know the Latin. And it is Albizia julibrisson. And this is a nitrogen fixing tree, meaning that it has a relationship with certain bacteria in the soil, which connect to the roots, make little nodules, and take atmospheric nitrogen the, from the air that is down in the soil, and give it to the plant. They fix it in a form that can be used. So we call that nitrogen fixation. The tree grows really quickly. It grows on disturbed and marginal soils. It actually doesn't invade necessarily right into the middle of dense hardwood forests. It's more likely to show up at the edge of a construction site, at the edge of a highway, or where you're trying to keep the grass mowed and everything in kind of a low level ecosystem. They like to show up at the edges and do what they do, which is repair the soil by creating biomass very quickly, a lot of growth, a lot of fast growth, and a lot of nitrogen. And that nitrogen is also in the leaves. So the leaves are being fed, the leaves are collecting sunlight, they're giving sugars to bacteria, the bacteria are taking atmospheric nitrogen, fixing it into a usable form, which is then building leaf mass, which is quite high in protein, which means that it's high in nitrogen, and you don't need to know all of that. All you need to know is that this stuff could be really good fertilizer. Down in the tropics, there's a tree called Glaricidia sepium, which is often used for living fences. I've done videos where I was building living fences out of it. It is a fast-growing, nitrogen-fixing, tropical tree species. The mimosa is a warm, temperate climate species, but uh, Glaricidia sepium is a tropical, and it's super, super useful. You can stick pieces of it in the ground and it roots. You can feed it to your animals. And in this book, I was reading, a kilo of fresh green leaves pruned from a Glaricidia tree can fertilize crops just as well as a kilo of fresh cow manure. Often to motivate farmers to plant Glaricidia, we bury a kilogram of fresh Glaricidia leaves within a few centimeters of each of a couple dozen hills of recently planted maize or vegetables. The impact of the Glaricidia on these crops almost always catches farmers by surprise and creates considerable enthusiasm for planting more trees. So this is a chop and drop green manure, which you can actually just bury the leaves in the ground. And so I thought, okay, Glaricidia. It's in the Fabaceae family. It's a nitrogen fixing tree from the tropics. I have a trash tree, a nitrogen fixing tree that is all over the place. So why not do the same thing? Why not? do an experiment. So this morning, my daughter and I dug a garden bed, and we didn't really dig it, dig it. We're trying not to turn the ground over a lot. We did that to get rid of weeds last year, and we're pretty much done with it. We just used a broad fork to loosen up the soil a little bit, and we had watered it in very well, and then we took that loose soil, and we made a nice mound about three foot by 30 foot. Then we divided it in half, and half of it I covered with a layer of mimosa leaves. Just went to a mimosa tree, stripped all the leaves off, the little leaflets. There's a central stem on the leaf and you just strip all the little leaves off. And I filled a five gallon bucket full of leaves in about five or 10 minutes worth of picking leaves. And then dumped that down about 15 feet of bed. And then we threw a little more dirt over the top of it so we can get that nitrogen down on the inside where it's gonna be captured by the soil. And 
we planted it just like we planted the other bed. So this is the beginning of our experiment. How do you think this is going to turn out? You're gonna to have to watch and see because I have absolutely no idea. Before we go any further, I wanna tell you about Scrub Fest 2023. This is Scrub Fest 2. This is gonna happen at the Scrubland Farms Nursery in Orange Springs, Florida, which is about 45 minutes or so out of Ocala. It is in North Central Florida. It's $50 per adult. Kids 18 and under are absolutely free, so if you have a large family, don't worry about it. If you wanna bring some kids from your church that are interested in gardening, just bring them. We do not care, but uh, we've got four or five speakers already. We've got food vendors, and there is an awesome nursery of food forest plants, all kinds of crazy, rare stuff. And I will be talking and uh, signing books. We'll have our books there and t-shirts and all kinds of other stuff. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Last year was awesome. We had over 350 people there. And this year I expect we will do even better. So you are welcome. I will put a link to that below. Scrub Fest 2. All right, back to the video. I was thinking along the lines of what could be used locally that's already here? And people will say, well, don't plant mimosa tree. That's, a, that's, an, that's an ornamental invasive. It's, it's terrible. It's, you know, it, it drops seeds everywhere and grows. But on the other hand, this is a resource which could be harvested because it's already here. So you can compost your enemies. If you don't like it, compost it. You can put that on a t-shirt. But the, the mimosa is already here. It's alongside every road. They are never going to get rid of mimosas. Mimosas are now a naturalized species and it is not going away. So we might as well use it. I'm thinking, what about using mimosa trees like you would do Inga Alley cropping? Where you have trees in rows and they provide a little bit of shade and then you chop them and drop them to feed the soil, trap in humus, create mulch, you grow your corn in between. When the season gets hot and dry, you let them continue to grow. When it gets really wet and rainy and everything wants to grow underneath, chop the tops of the tree, throw them on the ground, put your crop in. Then when it gets hot and dry, the tops have grown back. This Inga alley cropping, if you look it up, you'll find it utterly fascinating. But you could use mimosa like that. We have a nitrogen fixing tree that's right here, Albizia julibrisson. It got here, it escaped, it's been a very bad tree. So we need to make it into something that is useful. Just been thinking about it, thinking about how we could use a readily available tree. And if you have any more thoughts, please leave them below. We've already used it in compost piles. We've used it to make anaerobic compost tea, Dave's fetid swamp water. It's a chop and drop in the food forest already. And I'm constantly cutting and having them grow back. I've got mimosas as a shade over my nursery and I cut them way back so they don't set seed. They grow back and I put my shade plants underneath one of them. There's a lot of uses already. It's already here. Might as well use it. Just a few thoughts. I think it's gonna be a very interesting experiment, so stick around and see what happens. And if you have any mimosa trees, I would like you to try and do some experiments yourself and see what you find. Compost your enemies. And if you're interested in this shirt, by the way, this shirt right here, this is my son's design. He has his own little t-shirt company that he's building. I'll put a link to that below. That is all his income. So if you wanna support, you know, a little a little local business, do that. Anyhow, um, thanks for joining me. Uh, check out the book, Restoring the Soil by Roland Bunch. If you are interested in tropical cover crop green manure systems that uh, allow you to create your own fertilizer, stop drought, feed the soil, um, build up topsoil very rapidly and all those other things, this is the way to do it, Restoring the Soil, Roland Bunch. Very, very interesting, I'm halfway through it and uh, I started reading it about two days ago, cannot put it down. So something to look for, I will put a link to that below as well. And until next time, may your thumbs always be green. I went to see David David the Good. Eat him. <laughs>